Welcome. This is the Jenkins User Experience Special Interest Group. It's the 27th of March, 2024. Mm -hmm. Topics for today include LTS baseline selection, what's happened recently in UI improvements, including recently merged and in progress. Any other items we need to add to the agenda? Okay, then let's go through those. Um, first topic is LTS baseline selection. So we're one week away from the LTS baseline being selected. As far as I can tell from the ratings, so looking at the Jenkins change logs, the ratings are generally positive on weekly releases. No, I've looked at each of the bug reports in the last five or six and found that they are five or six weekly releases, and they are in general plug-in issues, not issues with Jenkins Core. So I think we're nice and stable. 2.451, if it needed to be chosen, is a good choice. 2.452 is also possible. It will release next Tuesday. Any questions on upcoming baseline selection? Or maybe I should ask differently, any major UI changes that any of you are aware of that are coming to Jenkins Core in the next weekly? Okay, great. So next let's talk about what's happened recently in UI improvements. The pipeline graph view has had several recent releases and in those recent releases, some nice, nice capabilities like for instance, a run details card is now available that includes the upstream cause. And Tim Jacome reported in chat that as far as he can tell, all the known bugs with graph presentation or portions of graph are resolved. Uh, parallel, this was one of those handling skip stages in parallel branches. Uh, Tim Brown's addition of the tree scanner. So the, the pipeline graph view is looking especially good as far as I can tell. Thanks very, very much to Tim for the work on the console view, or Stuart Rowe, Tim, Tim Brown and Tim Jacob. Any questions or comments there on pipeline graph view? Okay, then on Jenkins core, I didn't have I hadn't extracted any specific topics. Are there any UI improvements that you'd like to highlight that you've seen in recent recent Jenkins releases? Okay, then let's take on the next topic. In progress, pipeline graph view is we've got a proposal in to add a change details card um, like here with the changes. And that changes detail, it's currently being prototyped. You can see that the pull request is in draft mode, open three days ago. But I look at that and it looks promising. It's similar to what we see for the changes that are presented from a, the, the more typical job page. Then on Jenkins core, Daniel, Daniel has proposed moving the people view from core to a plugin. Would you like to give us an overview, Daniel, of the, of the situation there with the people view? All right, so um, there's a really old Jenkins issue that I linked in my PR comment uh, where people complain about uh, the existence of the people view and that due to data protection laws makes it uh, impossible for them to use Jenkins since people need their need overall read permission to use it at all. But that also grants permission to access the list of all people known to Jenkins. Um, that got a recent ping um, and a new, uh, an old pull request from 2014 was uh, resurrected by yeah, this one, um, which uh, doesn't actually do what uh, the old uh, title said, separate permission for people view. Um, and so uh, previously in 2014, there was feedback for uh, the old pull request that it would, it would be better off in a plugin. So I thought I would look into that to see feasibility and it seemed pretty straightforward. Um, the idea here is that uh, unlike the vast majority of uh, feature extractions from core, 
but like the CC Tray XML plugin that I linked in my comment, uh, this would not come with a plugin split because there are no plugins with a single exception that use this API in Jenkins core. Uh, so doing it that way uh, would not break a significant number of plugins mm -hmm. while allowing administrators who do not want to have this feature to just not install the plugin. That's the way I did it for, uh, for CC Tray XML. Um, and this is the way I'm proposing it here. The plugin at this point is essentially just the code from core restructured a bit to make it work, but feature-wise it is identical and the change in core um, replaces the existing URLs if people access them directly with a placeholder page that tells them to install the people view plugin if they want to have the plugin, if they want to have the uh, functionality there. So anyone who uses um, bookmarks or uses the provided uh, REST API will be able to, will be directed to uh, the new plugin, but it will not be automatically installed and update. I think this is a pragmatic solution in this case, given there are next to no consumers of it. I like that. So all that we would then need to have Kevin Martins be sure he does is in the LTS change log, an upgrade guide, he puts a note, people view has been removed intentionally. If you would like the functionality, you need to install this plugin. And if they don't detect it through the UI clicks, like you've described, we can, we hope they, they read the documentation. Great. Well, the other way around, if they don't read the docs, which nobody does, then right. they will see it on the UI. Okay. Yes. You, you detected my <laughs> bias, right? Exactly. Right. If they don't read the docs, which they don't, then we hope that the use the use exper user experience will guide them. Oh, you need the plugin. Great, right. right? And that also opens up the possibility, since it's in a plugin, and the plugin or, or the the feature currently has, besides being available to everyone with overall read and listing all of the users, it also has the performance problem, because what happens when you access the view, is, uh, especially the top level view. Um, Jenkins will load all build records of all jobs to identify the SCM users because the people view is not the user's view. Um, Jenkins kind of conflates right. who is a user in the security realm and who has committed to something at some point in time. Um, and so all build records are loaded, which means you may wait minutes for these pages to finish rendering. And it's even worse with the REST API. Basically, you have no chance to use the API if you're behind the reverse proxy that sets a reasonable timeout for an upstream response. And so uh, this being in the plugin, I think we can provide a more basic feature that's not quite equivalent, but that allows administrators to look into what user records Jenkins has locally just for admins and uh, other plugins can fill the gap here. If there are specific information needs here, uh, it doesn't have to be the specific people that you plug in after all. Excellent. And so your, your analysis that had found these two outdated plugins so last release over over almost 10 years ago last release nine years ago of one and the other that gavin mogan has said hey he's no longer maintaining it. He considers it a failed experiment right that's great right okay super and either of those if someone wanted to bring them back all they do is declare a dependency on this new plugin right that's that's really all they have to do is if they want to bring it forward, they declare dependency on the plugin and release a new version. Potentially, yes. Uh, the GraphQL server is a bit weird. There it just appears in a list of classes. Uh, uh, I don't know what's going on there. I think it's because it is intended to be a GraphQL representation of the object graph or something like that. Right. Um, so I don't know exactly what's involved there. It might be as simple as just deleting a class from the list and, and you're done. I'm not, I don't even remember whether it was in production code. 
the other with Jabber server, depending on what the exact use case is. I mentioned that it takes forever to build this list of users. There is a solid chance that this is not actually the kind of information the maintainers wanted to look for, but this is what they had found. So it might actually be more correct to use a different API like user all or something along those lines to get just the users with records in Jenkins without loading all of the builds. But yeah, so uh, your your suggestion should definitely work. Alter alternatively, um, look for a different approach to, to accomplish the same goal. Great. So this feels to me like it's a good candidate to merge for this 2.452 so that we get it in before the LTS. What's your sense of the relative risk of it? Given your investigation, do you, does that seem sensible to you or am I being too aggressive? We've had two approvals. It's it's met all the all the requirements for usual. Yeah, I, I don't particularly see a blocker here. Um, I did the usage and plugin search. Um, I identified one other use uh, at CloudBees, but I believe the latest state is that that would be deleted anyway. So um, should be safe enough. And I mean, until the LTS line is out, it's another six weeks. Uh, so that should be safe enough. Um, so at a minimum, I think you can start the countdown and uh, then we can check whether there are uh, whether we can identify any additional users. Great. All right. So I'm gonna I'm actually going to live in person in front of everybody start the countdown. Let's see, we've got a correct label. No, we don't have a label attached. And this is an RFE. Do you think? Should I call it a? I, I don't feel like calling it a bug. Uh, RFE potentially major depending on how you see the breakage. Yes, a good question. All right, so yeah, I'm I'm going to go with RFE. Are you okay with that, or would you prefer? Do you have a, it, do you have a strong preference one way or the other? Call it RFE. Label it removed. Label it U I U X. Oh, removed. Right. Very good. And U I. Okay. Good. All right. Excellent. And now we start the clock. Thank you, Daniel. Anything else on removing the people view? Okay, then let's go on to the next topic, which was removing the side panel widget. And this one, Daniel, I think is more conversation. There's not a, I've not seen a pull request, but rather a, a question you raised in Gitter chat. And with seven of us here today, I think it's a good place for a, at least a conversation. Do you wanna begin the, the discussion there? Um, sure. So I'm currently working on uh, some stuff that integrates with uh, GitHub Actions. And so what stood out to me there was that I have no clue what the available resources are. They just exist or, you know, they are delayed. And in comparison, it struck me as... Uh, weird that Jenkins tells everyone exactly how many agents are connected because realistically low privilege users shouldn't really need to care. They care whether their builds can start or not. Um, and if there are 50 agents connected that are all sitting idle, but their own pipeline says there is no agent with the label, whatever, then that, information was at best misleading. So um, I started questioning the value of telling non-admin users how many nodes are connected. That seems like superfluous information for anyone who's not an administrator or at least has agent-related permissions. And so why don't we stop using that? That seems like it would open up the UI in some views a bit. Uh, make them less busy, get rid of questionable AJAX. Uh, if you look at how uh, these widgets are implemented, 
uh, we basically replace a part of the HTML. Um, if I remember correctly, that makes keyboard navigation awkward. And it all seems to be for very minor, like like very little benefit, if if at all. Like you see what's running, but you could just as easily see what's running in an appropriate view. Um, so uh, that's what I uh, wanted to start the discussion on, removing the executor widget at least. Um, unsure about the queue widget, that seems more useful uh, because if you have access, in most instances, if you have access to a job, you have some interested interest in or involvement with it. So, um, but but the executors widget seems completely unnecessary. And so, when you say remove it, so I'm an admin, and I I like the executor widget because I use it to look at how things are going. But an admin would they still see it, or will I need to go somewhere else as an admin to see executor status? Uh, could go either way. Uh, in one of the responses I got in Gator, uh, I was pointed to the prototype that Jan did a while ago uh, in which uh, there is no widget by default, but like a, a button on the side panel that opens a pop-up, um, not unlike our security warnings, just off to the side. And I guess this is where the executors would show up. Um, that seems like kind of a compromise. Uh, it's there if you want to look at it, but it's not shown by default. Um, so that might also work out. But yeah, um, just just the thought I had. Um, I have not done development uh, for this so far. Just wanted to kind of get some some feedback whether this would be worth pursuing. Okay, so we've got Uli and Vadek here and Antoine, all who are interacting with Jenkins. Comments, Uli, I see that you unmuted. Yeah, uh, I think uh, these widgets uh, should be moved but all which it should be moved somewhere else. So I think uh, Jenkins still has a problem that we have this sidebar, which is some kind of navigation. And this sidebar also contains some widgets, which makes not much sense for me. I think we should clean that up to have a sidebar, which or a menu bar or a navigation bar. And then we should have a page where all these widgets can be placed. And if someone wants to place all these widgets on one view, then it's fine for me. But I think it would clean up the UI if we remove these widgets to some separate place. Mm. So this is still a little bit strange for me that we have the sidebar with so many links and if there are more plugins, then you get more links. And I'm not sure if it's possible to add uh, additional widgets. I don't know. So I, I think it would be helpful if we have a place where we can put these widgets. So for instance, when I'm looking at the dashboard view plugin, this is a plugin where you create the page on your own or the view on your own. So you select the elements you would like to see, and these are the elements you see. So if I want to see the queue, then I add the build queue, for instance. But I think it's better to let the users decide which widgets are shown. And it, it, if possible, it would be very helpful for all other pages if these widgets do not show up on the left in the side panel. So it's a little bit a problem of the uh, space as well. So we have, yeah, actually just a menu. And, and no normally when you see modern web applications, the sidebar collapses to some small thing on the right, uh, if you're on the, yeah, on a smartphone. And the, yeah, we can't do that with the widget. So it would make sense to split navigation from content it would be one thing for the future so i think what you're saying is you you see a, a a day in the future at long after this this idea but that would you take this even further i think yeah. is what you've just described it's not that 
that this idea has to encapsulate all the things you were saying, but rather that there is a way that this mm -hmm. could go even further. Now, Daniel, you had said you reviewed Jan's prototype. Is is what Uli's describing aligned with what Jan's prototype was doing? Sorry, what was the question? So, so you had you had looked at Jan's prototype in the context of having no widget by default, and Uli was saying, "Hey, we 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 long term would like to have the sidebar gone completely, the widgets gone from the sidebar complete, the side panel completely, and only have it be navigation." Is that aligned with Jan's prototype? I don't remember how Jan's prototype did navigation. There was there was just like a very. Uh narrow line on the far left side mm -hmm. of the screen that had a few buttons you could click that I think also was some sort of navigation. Um, yes, thank you, Kevin. Uh, so uh, link is in chat. Oh, oh good. To okay. open it. Great. So let me. So it was not part of the regular UI, but was quite separate from it. Ah, okay, right. So here we see, thanks. That That's, this is the easiest way to, so here it's it's not even expand and contract no hamburger menu it's just navigate well um if you uh make the window smaller it actually gracefully scales down or entirely dis it, it moves ah. to the bottom i think okay so so when i'm at phone scales it really has moved itself out of the way nice right. and the one that looks like a pie uh, I think uh, represents the controllers. Oh, yeah, the the executors widget. Uh, oops, the, when you said built in. Oh, oh, right. So this is prob. Well, okay. You said pi. I'm not sure. I picked the right one. Did I pick the right one? Yeah, yeah. That was it. If this you look one. at the yeah. So obviously this page doesn't exist yet. Uh, but, but this it has would a, be it the... has a pop up when you when you hover over it. That I think ah, when you ah. click a back one um, navigation item where the build queue was, yeah, this one. And I think this is uh, the thing we, where we should go. We should have a page where we have these widgets. And this is the running builds widget. And it does not need to be present on every page. If I want to see the builds, I navigate to this page. Right. So, yeah, that would be the future and not the near term, but in the long term. Right. What's also so. interesting about this is um, while it superficially looks like the executors widget, the focus is on the running builds. Like if you go to the oh, home page right, again. Oh, right, right. Here you mean this one is right. on running so if, builds. So if nothing's running, then nothing would be shown. Right now in Jenkins, if you look at some Jenkins instances, like I think the Apache projects, they have these super special agents with 20 executors. So mm -hmm. you have this giant widget and you need to scroll down to see everything and everything's just idle. While in this case, it just shows you the bills, right? That would be kind of between having it hidden and uh, retaining what we currently have to just change the focus from uh, it is on the executors and what they're doing, if anything, uh, to what are the bills that are currently running and just mention the Mm -hmm. the, the node uh, the builds are running on um, as just additional metadata there. So yeah, I think those are two, th th there were a bunch of options here uh, and I just wanted to kick off the, the discussion on the, on the topic. Thank you. Any comments from others, insights or things you'd like to share? So for me, it, it seems like the uh, were there things in the chat did, daniel that you'd like to highlight in addition to what you've already mentioned anything others any other items i don't think so no okay great so the prototype um prototype idea seems to support that and what you're proposing feels like a a good first step towards it And um... well, I mean, I propose the removal, right? So, so the admins would need to have something where they see the status of things, right? Um, so, 
whether we need different prototypes to look into, make it pluggable, think about, you know, what what are the various use cases, especially the ones out of the box uh, or um, that we consider best practices there. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure what the solution should be, uh, but I am fairly confident that it should be different from what we have now. Right. I like that. That's a, I think that's a great way of saying it. So, so what we have right now is not this and, but getting rid of somehow moving the executors widget out of the, the non-privileged users experience makes sense. I think your, your observation about GitHub actions, not showing resources is a sensible thing. Anything else on the topic? With regards to what Uli said, um, I just wanted to um, remind us that the builds history widget is also a widget. So unless you see like the various list views as being without a widget, without widgets in the future, and having a very different navigation from what job views currently have. Well, we need to think about what to do with the build history widgets of individual jobs, right? If you select master here uh, in the list, then and, uh, on the left, you will have the build history. Right. And now, this, this is ex expand and contract. Right. right. It, it works similar to the other widgets, right? And you click mm -hmm. trend and you get a page that looks, looks a lot like a half-baked separate view for the build history. So perhaps we could take all of the information shown in the side panel and kind of move it here. Right. And just have a separate page for the build history, make it a prominent project action. So it shows up in the middle of the main job view would also in the status page, right? Mm -hmm. That would also be uh, like like similar to the stage view, right? This is also a built history of sorts, if you will. Um, so there are a few options there, but it's not as easy as saying, well, the side panel is weird and the, the widget is unused anyway. Let's rip it all out because the built history, I think, is far more important to to let's let's say non admin users. Right. Yeah, I certainly depend vitally on the build history this widget i navigate it all the time right good thank you but this widget should be placed on the main screen here so I, 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 it makes no sense that it is on the side panel it should be here where the stage view is or where the test results are the user should decide which of these widgets show up in this screen so yeah, so so Uli, your concept is this build history widget would drag towards the center of the screen, yeah. right? It yes. would it would appear, and, and, and my, then I choose which my, things uh, I actually yeah. want to see. Yes, exactly. And the best idea it would be if we on this page all elements which are show which show up here are a draggable and should could be configured by the user which of these they want to see. Mm. It does not make sense to say, hey, here you have everything, but some people just want to see the test results, some want to see the stage view, and and, and this should be user configurable. Right. But this is uh yeah. A ma lot major of work to major, do. major effort and a and a major a major effort to retain compatibility while making such a change. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else on this particular topic? Not for me. Okay, thank you. We had one more open one that I had noted. Uh, Jan Farczyk had started a, a pull request on linting that I think is still not settled. There are others that this one is just ongoing discussion, right? I think is what's happening there. Are there others that we should discuss here as a group? Others about the linting or about other... any any user experience topic? Yes, I have one that I didn't write on the agenda. Okay. Um, I recently uh, upgraded the data tables 
uh, plugin, which is now at a new version. It's 2.6. And this new version has some yeah, new yeah, effects, some new user interface elements, and it looks a little bit different than before. So I'm not sure if it's interesting for others. Maybe I can show a screenshot, uh, a screenshot, not uh, share my screen. Also. Yeah, let's let's do that, Uli. Let's have you show it. I'm going to stop sharing. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So. So, are you seeing now my uh, coverage yes, report? Yes, we, okay. see, the, we so, see the coverage report. So, what I'm uh, talking about is uh, this uh, whole table where my mouse is now hovering. And this widget is provided by the data tables, uh, yeah, JavaScript framework. And they released a new version, which has uh, some new yeah, features. So, for instance, I can add new buttons into the view. So here I have a button where I can show the coverage of only the changed files. So when I click this button, yeah, there are no changed files, but normally you would see only the files that have been changed. Mm. So you have additional UI elements you can add to this view. Uh, the user interface slightly changed. So before we have this striped model, where we have um, white and black, white and black. And now it's yeah some highlighting on the current line where you are. You see when you're hovering over the topics, you see where how you yeah, want to sort. So this is new in the view. And yeah, you can have tooltips for all the elements which are here. These elements are from yes, yeah, the work from uh, Jan. So this is the same a framework tippy in the background. Oh, good. So no Yahoo UI. Yes. Yeah. So you can basically the sorting can be done on an additional attribute, for instance. So when I'm clicking here, uh, you what you're here seeing is a widget, but you can skip a sorting. Uh, property where you can say, okay, the widget contains a number and the number, yeah, is using the sorting. So this is a kind of simple. Um, what is also new in the, in this if tables is that it automatically remembers the last settings. So if I switch to 24 elements and when I'm reloading the page, uh, then it's still there. And I don't have to do anything. It's all in the framework or pro all provided by the framework. And it works now because prototype JS is removed. So now it serializes to JSON and everything works out of the box. And this table also has uh, uh, the capabilities to, uh, sorry, to show uh, more columns if you make the screen wider. So now you see a lot of more columns and if you switch smaller then it automatically renders uh, the number of or it uses a space that is available and yeah i think this is a widget which basically i'm just uh, have a wrapper <laughs> so the the main work is in javascript so it would be really helpful if we can use such elements more in jenkins without reinventing the wheel and just say, okay, this is a good component. A lot of projects use them and they work out of the box. Maybe another example, what I'm using, oh, sorry, um, I'm using it also for the tables view where you can uh, have some, you can open a row, a details part of a, uh, so you can see here, okay, where is this code duplication and here, you see the code application. So this is something you don't need to invent on your own. It's already provided by this library. So a few other plugins are already using it, but yeah, most plugins that are using it are mine plugins. So I want to make a little bit of an advertisement to please use this view. It's much simpler to use than the standard HTML tables or the big table from Jenkins.
Thank you. So this looks like a candidate for some work that we brought into the Git plugin as a draft pull request, as a, a pull request from Google Summer of Code a year or two ago that we haven't, I haven't merged and released yet, where it presents maintenance results in a tabular form with more and less information. So thank you for highlighting it, Uli. Mm -hmm. Any questions from others to directed towards Uli? All right. Thank you, Uli. Any other topics we need to discuss today? Okay. Thanks very much. Session will is recording will be available in 24 to 48 hours. Thanks for joining.